All right. Um, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for inviting uh, Magento to join us. Um, I know it's been going on. Um, I mean, the event has gone around, got um, been been around for a while, and I think we just kind of started um, staffing the team in um, Asia early this year. So technically speaking, we did have some of our colleagues who participated in Magento, the Singapore one. I think um, I think last year or the year before, but this is probably the first time we're coming in uh, from the Asia team. Um, so we're really glad to kind of have this opportunity to come in and um, interact with the community. Uh, my name is Mel Lim. Um, I'm based out of Singapore and I worked on enterprise customer engagements uh, for Asia. Um, really don't mean for this to be so much of a sales pitch when I go to a customer place, but I think it's good to just kind of meet everyone in the community that you guys come regularly to meet up, which we think is great. Um, we have been to a couple of this in um, Indonesia, in Japan, and um, in, in China, um, always kind of good to kind of hear, um, you know, kind of, I guess, a community coming from different experiences from Magento. Um, usually we would have our channel team, um, some of our consultants um, kind of speaking more about the products update. Um, but I guess from this perspective, we really want to kind of come in and say hi um, to communicate a little bit about um, what's been going on at Magento. And also, you know, if you have any questions about Magento, where we are, what our plans for Asia, um, you know, more than happy to kind of share. But I think it's all um, it's all upward looking for us. Um, you know, we've just started hiring here. Um, you know, currently have teams um, in Singapore, in Australia, um, Hong Kong, um, India. Uh, we're looking to kind of uh, double up the team by, um, in about two to three months from now. Um, so there's just a lot of uptake, uh, which I guess um, it's also, I guess, a good, in fair indication of where um, commerce is kind of bringing us, um, you know, in digital itself but also kind of the bigger story around, um, you know, kind of multi-channel selling, which we're seeing a lot in the market. So as I kind of go through the next few slides, I uh, really just kind of want to share some trends that we see in the market. Um, there may be um, a good reflection of what, um, you know, kind of we see in other parts of the regions. And if you are, you know, selling in other markets other than Southeast Asia and Singapore, you know, happy to also kind of hear your thoughts on all this um, in terms of just kind of, um, you know, using this as a good sharing session for all. So um, as I kind of go into the first slide, um, you know, really kind of, um, you know, we meant this as more for someone who's been acquainted with Magento before, but um, that's sort of like a good timeline of where Magento has been so far. Um, you know, from, um, you know, when we first launched uh, Magento 2.0 um, in November 15, it's, I mean, it's probably like two years, exactly two years from, um, from now that we, we, we first launched that. And we've kind of come a long way, um, even though it's only been 24 months, but um, really kind of, if you look at all the product offerings that we've kind of rolled out in the last 24 months, um, it's been really exciting for us. And um, I guess personally, it was also one of the things that kind of drew me to kind of think about, you know, having a career at Magento Commerce, uh, which I thought was really exciting at how they were aggressively expanding and the products were really, um, you know, kind of, um, top class in terms of spending, you know, kind of extensive um, R&D and making sure that this, uh, you know, what the modern stack needs to be for customers today. Um, so, so you might be kind of familiar with, um, you know, using Magento as a commerce platform to power some of your online sales. Um, and you can see um, in the whole Magento suite, uh, there's some stuff that we kind of added onto the mix um, in looking at this as a more holistic um, commerce solution today. So, you know, when you're selling, you might be thinking about um, you know, some of your data reporting requirements. Um, how do you collect data from different sources? Um, you can see that we've got um, Magento um, Business um, Intelligence that's been added on to the, to, the, to the main offering. We've also kind of launched a um, Magento Cloud edition of the product. So right now, be beside, um, besides self-hosting, you're able to kind of do this as a, as a cloud um, option. Um, there's a lot of um, strategic partnerships that we have, um, you know, kind of announced with uh, content management system providers. Um, we've also kind of um, very, I mean, an, uh, one, of, one of the flagship product here that we've been seeing a lot of take up and kind of very interesting stories that we have been having with merchants are actually around um, other management, which is our mom solution that we launched in January 1.6. So uh, when we kind of first launched that um, early last year, we only had three or four merchants that were actually running on that. Um, they were mostly in um, North America. Um, you know, kind of fast forward that to um, this quarter, I'm really excited that we have at least three clients um, that are live on this in Asia right now. Um, it's been helping a lot of the merchants that have, um, you know, kind of brick and mortal. 
uh, to kind of go into um, trying to kind of look at um, e-commerce um, as a digital platform, um, sort of as a complementary channel to selling and really making the whole, um, you know, kind of omni-channel experience um, more apparent for consumers. I mean, it's a big term when we talk about omni-channel, but here what we're trying to kind of say is that whether you're trying to kind of shop online, you're trying to shop at brick and mortal, or you're, you know, basically kind of bridging the gap between desire and purchase, at the end of the day, it needs to be seamless to the consumer in terms of a journey. And um, our, I mean, our omni-channel capabilities are fully built upon this particular product, which is Magento Auto Management. Um, last thing I thought that was, um, you know, kind of um, also uh, worth talking about here, and I mean, not really so much about the product, uh, but just, you know, we've been very excited about the release of 2.2 uh, Magento, uh, which is just about four weeks back. Um, that really kind of brings us, um, you know, kind of ahead of the market. I mean, we have been kind of working with a lot of B2B companies, but um, the 2.2 release uh, really just kind of brought us um, ahead of the stack because we basically released, um, you know, B2B functionalities which are pre-baked with addition. So if there's merchants that are actually selling, um, you know, you know, kind of branded manufacturers that are distributing to wholesalers and distribution and, and dealers in the past, they might be looking at, you know, a vendor management platform of their own, getting e-commerce just for selling to consumers. Um, there's a lot more stories around what you can use the platform for today. So just really engaging stories that we've been seeing and merchants genuinely excited and partners as well, really want to kind of see what else they can kind of upsell on the whole product. So it's been a very interesting and exciting space for us um, and definitely more so than I feel in Asia. <laughs> Um, I mean, some of the things that are really kind of driving all this um, trends is obviously not Magento. I mean, obviously we hope that we are, but we are just one of the main factors. Uh, but just as a whole, the, the market conditions have become, you know, increasingly complex with channels um, and intermediaries broken down. Um, you know, traditionally where you have B2B to C, you could kind of break it down into, um, you know, various um, intermediaries for um, wholesalers um, could, you know, often kind of take the shape of um, distributors as well. So really, you know, all the boundaries are actually um, delineating now. And what we're kind of seeing here is that everyone basically wants to target consumers um, up front, right? They want to speak to the merchant. So, so it's, and, and on the merchant front, I mean, it's apparent for um, you and myself that, you know, we, we purchase, you know, we purchase uh, we purchase products, you know, based on a lot of social influences. Um, that's something that's evident in, you know, social selling, social commerce, which is extremely big, especially in um, markets like Indonesia and China. Um, and a lot of all this, um, you know, kind of social influences, which eventually kind of, um, you know, kind of leads on to um, consumption. Um, are also, you know, along the lines of, you know, all these online, online shoppers then obviously have, you know, kind of more expectations around, you know, the merchants providing an online experience which is engaging and, you know, holistic. So, so, so with that, it, it's also something that we've seen a lot of uh, merchants come through with requests when they are looking at their, mo their, their digital strategy to have a mobile first, um, you know, kind of um, implementation in mind. Everything that they want to do, oh, you know, can I launch a mobile app? First, should I, I want this site to actually be mobile friendly and stuff like that. So I think, you know, when you pick up all this um, little bits of, you know, merchant requirements and kind of put it together. These are probably the three main insights that we see that contributes to the overall, you know, kind of market environment uh, for, 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 for at least, um, you know, the vendors in the commerce space today uh, when we kind of meet and talk to the merchants. Um, and of course, um, you know, what, what, what we want to sell um, to, I mean, what Magento wants to kind of help the merchants on and what merchants, you know, face in terms of internal and external challenges, it's always kind of a balancing act. Um, you know, probably not so much um, for the audience here, but I really just want to kind of share, you know, what we always, you know, kind of see this um, dilemma when we talk to merchants about, um, you know, internally wanting to kind of keep a lean team uh, while trying to kind of, um, you know, really kind of get ahead of the, um, curve to really kind of um, try something new, but, you know, obviously having limited resources, limited budget to roll something out until it's, um, full, it, it's been kind of um, proven. So you need that data to be able to help you to translate into um, actionable insights, um, helping you to drive the innovation um, at a faster pace that you would like to, um, to be ahead of your competitors. And then obviously, 
you know, externally, while you're having, you know, internal battles to kind of, um, you know, kind of work with, you have all this, um, you know, experiences, um, you know, bias, um, you know, kind of expectations. So that's really kind of what, um, you know, merchants are often in this, um, you know, kind of tough act to kind of be in today. And that's, I guess, a good problem for um, providers like ourselves and our, our, our solution um, um, and our, our SIs as well, because that's kind of where they, they would like to hear a lot around best practices what um, different markets, um, you know, have, have kind of led the way for and, and what they see, um, you know, are, you know, kind of uh, palatable for them to, um, you know, kind of take on and release kind of skill from there. So I think, um, you know, as a whole, we just kind of really see Magento having this um, sweet spot where, you know, you, you don't necessarily need to kind of start, um, you know, with a giant product. You can start where it needs to be and scale it to where you, you want that to be. Um, having a full future-proof strategy around, um, you know, where, where you're looking to kind of sell. So, uh, now obviously, that, that there is a lot of, um, you know, kind of areas around um, where you should start and how you should start and when you should start. Um, you know, but so this is some of the three key things, you know, that we've seen. Um, Usually, these are sort of like, um, I think, I think in the root of where all these conversations are, where um, I think I was chatting with um, a couple of you earlier on um, around kind of, um, you know, being able to kind of do, um, you know, omni-channel, um, you know, fulfillment experiences. So really kind of delivering that personalized, um, differentiated um, experience. Because uh, today, um, when a, um, you know, when, when a customer actually goes online, uh, they don't necessarily actually fulfill that transaction online. I mean, this is common knowledge for everyone. Um, and they also have, um, you know, kind of preferred ways around how do they engage with you. They may not necessarily want to kind of send it to, um, you know, SingPost to deliver it back to you. Um, they want to bring it to the store and get it changed um, immediately. So in-store associates, how do you make sure that you have the capacity to, um, capability to do that by checking stops in line and checking uh, what's available? So, um, so, so generally, it's just that number one thing around being able to deliver more differentiated shopping experience across channels. Um, this is one of the main, um, you know, kind of insights that we've been seeing, been driving a lot of this, um, you know, conversations around. Um, and of course, um, you know, growing new sales is always in terms of numbers, um, not just in, in terms of reaching um, new customers. It's also to kind of increase spend um, per customer group. Um, driving greater conversions and also opening up new channels of business models. Um, you know, traditionally, when um, customers have their own um, commerce channel, they think about it as you know wanting to be an all com all encompassing channel where you know all the sales needs to be drive through here, and that's a good ROI for me. Um, I think today merchants you know have to be forced. I mean, they're forced to kind of think about it differently because um, you have your Amazons, you have your Lazadas, you have your marketplaces. Um, they if you can't compete with them, you have to find a way to kind of use them as part of your strategy. And one of the roadmaps that um, Magento has got um, that's upcoming that should be kind of released very soon um, is kind of where we play in the marketplace piece for merchants who are selling on their own sites and also selling on marketplaces. Um, it's going to be a lot easier for you to kind of list your products and have a centralized um, strategy around um, just kind of managing all your um, digital sales. Um, of course, um, aligning um, performance of shopping expectations, that's a little bit more around, you know, kind of perf um, performance and, and, and really kind of what it means, what, what, you know, what does a second loss or, you know, what does a, you know, a delay in a one second page load means to, a, means to a merchant, right? I mean, the thing is that consumers, as always, like I said, um, you know, kind of they are, expectations are always um, ever increasing. So that's actually something that you want to make sure that, you know, you have that performance, um, you know, foundation and then work on bells and whistles around the website. Um, so that's a key thing, um, a very, very fundamental thing, which um, I mean, I, I think at some point um, all platforms are able to do that. But if you want to kind of work with platform that's been proven to kind of, you know, power, um, you know, basically more than 250,000 sites in the world, something like Magento, that's something that you can leverage a lot from you know, the best, um, the, the best in class um, solution providers like Renosis, you know, our partners, who, the official Magento community, um, you know, kind of um, experts. That's kind of where they've seen a lot of use cases here and they're able to kind of advise you on what they've seen work and what they've seen not. Um, so that's, that, that's something that uh, we've also kind of uh, seen a lot of conversations around. Um, just kind of um, sort of a last slide and, and really not so much of a, you know, bragging about ourselves, but I thought sometimes 
a lot of clients actually don't. A lot of com a lot of people that we talk to actually don't know what merchants are on Magento. I mean, I'm I'm actually guilty of that myself. Um, you know, and and when I kind of like joined this company, um, you know, I really kind of feel that every other site is actually on Magento in some form or shape. Um, so this is kind of a good, um, I guess, a slide to co show you kind of cross domains. What are some of the biggest brands in each category um, that's actually running on Magento? Um, and 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 what I kind of really love when I kind of talk to the slide as compared to if you know I was a different software company is that I might actually have one or two verticals that I can speak to if I am in competitor A or B's position. But in Magento, there's just like so much stuff to speak. Um, you know, when you talk about one vertical. Even if you think that it's only five clients, but then when you start looking into your system, you actually have like more than 15 clients actually selling something similar. Um, so that's, I mean, that makes my job really exciting. That makes me feel that the product is really great. And I, I mean, and, and we have a great team that's really kind of good at, you know, bringing all these brands live, working with partners like um, Renosis. And, and that's kind of where we kind of um, see Magento as we are Magento, which is our motto, um, in, in trying to kind of bring, um, you know, customers, um, bring, bring, bring our merchants um, to their goals of, um, you know, kind of selling online and reaching, their, re reaching where they need to be in terms of um, commerce sales. Um, so this is really sort of, a, a, I think it's a fair representation of, uh, you know, where Magento is um, in all the verticals. If there's anything that's of interest to you um, and you would like to kind of chat about maybe something that you have kind of thought about or something comes up, um, you know, we're open to kind of questions or, you know, anything that you might, might want to find out about some specific brands that are working on here or some trends that you see. I'm more than happy to share it um, if I'm aware of it as well. So I kind of kept this as the last slide, um, you know, really just kind of uh, maybe opening up if there's any questions around Machan. So it can be really kind of general stuff about what we're doing here why are we suddenly in Asia <laughs> or, you know, something about products, I'm more than happy to share. Any questions? Yeah, so, you know, yeah. Uh, primarily Magento has a strong market in the US and UK. Right. How do you see the Asian market? I mean, is it really picking up very fast or still people have some understanding about the Magento? Well, right, before, like, so before I answer your question, let me ask you guys a question. And maybe I think it's probably an interesting f fun fact. I mean, which market do you think Magento has the biggest market share in? If you can make a guess, just like continent-wise. Okay, so you guess US, any other? I'm sorry? North America. Right, so North America, okay. Do, you have, do we have any other guesses in the room? No? Okay, right. Well, maybe an absolute number of sites, North America for sure, right? Because of the sheer size of the market. But in terms of market share percentage, um, the largest market share that we have as a continent is actually Australia. So 49% of the sites in Magento, in Australia are running on Magento. Um, I mean, this, I kind of discovered it when I tried a company as well, but I guess like the, my, my point is, you know, like us being an American company, but, you know, one of the market that were penetrated so well and we're in such a mature stage there um, and we're still raring to go. We've got a good team there, you know, we're expanding. I mean, that tells a lot for Magento, especially in Asia. I think a lot of American companies, when they come to Asia, you know, the thinking is that Asia is kind of 2 or 3% of my revenue. So, you know, we're just going to kind of like push as hard as we can put some salespeople there, we'll try to kind of get some sales from there, from like the big companies. I think Magento has a very different strategy here, which is something that I thought, um, I personally kind of, um, you know, felt was attractive about the company, um, you know, was that um, they already had a quiet presence here, right? I mean, and you know, they had solution partners that was, you know, kind of um, plowing the market, getting all this um, merchants live, but it was just not so much publicized. And now when we're in the market, you know, Actually, when we go customer meetings, like every other person is a Magento licensed customer, at least in Australia. Um, so that gives us a lot of pride because it's part of Asia. And we just feel that, you know, with, without anyone in Australia for the longest time, we had that kind of market share. There's just so much more that we can do in other parts of Asia as well. So just to kind of answer your question, um, you know, the biggest market is the market share. I, I, I see, um, I mean, statistically speaking, it's Australia. Uh, but if you aggregate it out across global markets, um, we're at about 26% market share. So anything from North America down to, um, you know, kind of Asia, um, Oceania, um, it's about 26% market share that Magento has for all the commerce sites that are running globally today. And um, of course, we have big um, aspirations um, for, um, 
for Asia, as you would probably know, uh, we had a you know investment from a sugar daddy in uh, Greater China earlier this year, um, uh, and obviously that kind of like you know look, you know makes us kind of like I mean other than the fact that we pumped you know resources in Asia, it also means that a lot of our KPIs around success uh, we want to strongly drive it through Asia expansion. Any other questions? Yeah. As a sales person, how did you find when Magento two released that? I wasn't around when it was first released, so I thought it was a good thing. <laughs> but um, I mean, to be honest, um, I think there were a lot of feeding issues, um, as with any product. And um, I think that's also where I think the solution partners, solution partners, especially in this market, are especially commendable. Um, not for any, but for the fact that you know they were the ones confronting the customers. They are the ones who are telling the customers that you know you should move to Magento two and you know kind of preempt them on all this um, stuff. So it's an amazing job when you're actually not even an employer of Magento and you know you're you know basically like an extended you know kind of partner arm of Magento. So I think we did a great job as much as we could, um, given that we didn't have anyone in a lot of these markets. Um, definitely, I think we faced a lot of challenges in terms of um, you know kind of I guess um, uncertainty whether it makes sense or maybe they were you know just about to kind of finish. An implementation on on one and then two got two dot got released in November. So I think there were quite a lot of buzz around it. Um, I think um, there were a fair bit of negative ones as well. Uh, but come through coming through from there, I think um, towards the tail end of last year, I think Q three of last year, it it almost kind of you know we kind of reached I think um, I wouldn't kind of say a tipping point uh, because I think there's still stuff going on. But I think we could slowly kind of see ourselves, um, you know, kind of um, turn the corner where merchants are starting to kind of see that, you know, the benefits of kind of moving to Magento 2. Um, there's a lot more publicized uh, releases around successful case, story, uh, case studies. Um, you know, a lot of solution providers have extra um, stories to tell with merchants. Um, that's, a lot of, um, that's a lot to say about adoption, of course. There's still a lot more to go. Um, so right now, when we come into conversations, we actually don't kind of face that much anymore. And I would believe that it was one one year ago. It might be have been a different story altogether. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, are you seeing a lot of uh, merchants on Magento One move to Magento Two, or are they looking at other routes like Salesforce? Or no, I think um, I think. I, I, I would reasonably think that they're looking for other um, solutions out there as well. So um, it's on us to be able to kind of uh, you know, effectively communicate the benefits of moving the platform, um, keeping it within um, Magento, and um, you know, obviously kind of offering that support around um, the transition as well. Um, moving, to be honest, moving from Magento 1 to Magento 2, to, I mean, in, in actual sense, it's not really just kind of a click of a button, right? That's why you have solution partners in the market. So I think that's actually, you know, one of the, um, you know, kind of, I guess, market risk that we see. Uh, but we have, I mean, we just, we've been trying to kind of curtail that to a certain extent um, in, in some markets where we have a bigger installed base. And we do want to kind of make sure that before they flip over, uh, we're able to kind of come in with a bigger story. And that's why, if you saw from the first few slides, um, you know, we're kind of coming in not just to talk about platform to platform difference, but also, um, you know, kind of the um, products and the whole suite around other management, around um, business intelligence, and also offering a cloud package right now. So, how do you see the difference between Magento and the Salesforce actually? Because both are like on percentage now. I'm sorry? Uh, percent. Oh, right, okay, so um, the commercials? Right, 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 okay. Right, I think you mean from a business perspective, right? Okay, right, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think, I personally feel that, and, and before I you know, in my previous um, role, not with Magento, I actually am more familiar with Salesforce. Um, I actually work with them a lot more um, with their merchants. And, um, you know, I can kind of see why that story is um, compelling. And I don't disregard that even now that I'm Magento, we have full respect for our competitors. Um, and we think they deserve, you know, all the fanfare that they have um, as, a, as, as also one of the market leaders. But I think fundamentally, um, you know, what kind of differentiates here is, um, 
I think at the end of the day, um, you know, there's going to be merchants that's going to be a better fit for Salesforce. There's going to be merchants that would, you know, I can respect the fact of um, the open the open source heritage of Magento being able to kind of scale um, and you know looking at a total cost of ownership um, as as one of the key things which sometimes when you present to your stealing committee um, your overall um, budget approval you're going to be able to get a lot more buy-in when you're you know kind of when you're actually investing in X amount and you know that there's specific stories around being able to come through with a Y return in number of years. So Magento has been able to successfully demonstrate that in a lot of um, use cases and merchant stories. So I think um, you know, from that perspective, we, we, we relatively feel you know, that we have, um, I mean, we, we have a good story to tell around um, Salesforce, not, not against Salesforce, of course. Um, and I think there's always gonna be uh, clients where you know, they're launching like 40 sites and they only have one solution provider with um, no resources and markets at all. They want to do it, you know, in the same way, like a mirror side of every single market that they have. So for such, I mean, for such, um, you know, kind of um, for, for such merchants, and they have only US or Europe that's taking control of everything. And if they have actually gone global with Salesforce already, it's something that you know usually, you know, they they probably wouldn't kind of see Magento as um, you know the first point of. Um, consideration at, you know, as a platform for them in one single market if they're going to control everything globally. So I think it depends on, just to kind of come back to your answer, it's a roundabout answer, but you know, short answer is I think um, sometimes the way the customers' um, business operations are set up, um, it also makes a difference to how um, you know, they evaluate Magento as an offering uh, versus Salesforce. And I'm not talking about product features because I think Salesforce is a good product as well. Any other questions? Yeah. For the education. Yeah. Uh, which product that they're using from the margin? Right. Mean, you have you have a lot of uh, some of the product, right? Correct. Because correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I should I should clarify that a lot of this um at ninety nine percent of all this um all this um clients uh, logos that you're seeing here. They are all using our flagship um, digital commerce product because that's actually the base product, right? Before anything, you know, was even evolved and, you know, kind of acquired. So it's all digital commerce. But I would say that um, a lot of the merchants are using the, the other offerings um, in the whole suite to a very to to various extent. I mean, a lot of merchants, um, like I said, with if you want to kind of talk about education, for instance, I think um, there's a lot of. Um, I was just in a conversation this morning actually with another merchant. Um, so sort of in the education space, um, they're selling kind of like online training courses. So they actually, you know, see Magento as, um, you know, a preferred platform at the moment for evaluation because um, they wanted to sell not just to consumers, but they want to sell to corporates. So they see it as a good platform for selling B2B and B2C. Um, so the platform itself remains the same. Nothing's different. You're not paying different licenses for that. But the latest uh, two dot two release um, actually allows you to, um, you know, it's pre baked B two B functionalities as I mentioned. So I think, um, you know, I do hear some of the educational um, brands coming through with, um, you know, some some requirements of this. And I think something that's related is also um, in the publishing space that we see quite a bit of work in that as well. So they're selling not just to consumers, um, but they're selling not just to schools as well, but they're selling to corporates. Any other questions? Nope. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. I hope it was useful. And um, look forward to chatting with you guys again.